Hey Cancer, welcome to your love and romance reading for February 2023. This is for the Cancerian Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. We're going to check in here and see what's coming up in matters of love and romance for uh, the Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. So let's get one more shuffle in here, a good shuffle. And without further ado... My dears and my darlings, we're going to move the camera just a little bit closer. I'm going to get right on into it. First card coming up here for you guys is the death card. Now, this could be Scorpio energy, um, sun, moon, rising, or Venus. Some of you could be dealing with a Scorpio. That might be a very significant uh, partner or soulmate at this time. Uh, if you have Scorpio placements, there could be big changes and big shifts happening for you in those houses or in those areas of your life that might be opening the door to meeting a significant soulmate if you're single or that might be impacting or affecting an existing relationship. Now, the feeling and the vibe I'm getting from this card intuitively is a sense of ego death for some of you. So some of you may be in an existing relationship. And because you're going through this ego death, because you're going through this change and this shift, you may be losing your um, interest in this connection. Or you may be feeling like you love this person, but you don't love them romantically. You might be a little bit worried about this because you might be saying, I don't understand. Like nothing necessarily happened. Nothing necessarily like changed. This is like a wonderful person. Why am I not feeling what I felt before? And the reason why you're not feeling what you felt before, those of you who are in that situation where like there's no problems in the relationship or at least not like major problems, you know, like why, why am I to this degree not feeling it? Like, you know, this is a good relationship. This is a good person. Like, why am I feeling this way? Uh, for a lot of you who are feeling this way, it's because you're going through this ego death. You're going through this transition and this change and you're rediscovering yourself. So for some of you, you may be kind of like examining, do I want to kind of take a fresh approach with this relationship? Do I want to start over from like step one and treat it like I'm dating the person all over again, or I'm, I'm getting to know them all over again, or I'm, 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 I'm working to uh, build that romantic connection all over again, or do I want to uh, transition into some other, uh, something else in my life, whether it's another relationship or being single, or focusing my time and energy on, on other endeavors or other focuses. I feel like some of you are at a crossroads with a relationship because of ego death, because of a shift, because of a change where uh, you're uh, like uh, uh, coming out of the programming, coming out of the conditioning, and getting to know who you are, and getting to know yourself. Uh, your authentic self. And so this could be impacting your love life or romantic relationships uh, as you're going through this really significant change and this really significant shift. Um, I do feel for other ones of you who have been single, you may have gone through like a long period of singleness and now you're coming in February, you're coming into like this phoenix rising from the ashes energy. It's going to be seen as a really big come up. People are going to see you as like coming up or like glowing up. And you will have people from the past uh, try to get with you again. Maybe they didn't appreciate you in the past, but now they see you like you're doing well. They see you like you're, you're put together and they're wanting to be with you now. It's like now they want you. Uh, I don't know. It's up to you what you want to do, you know, but I think for a lot of people, we might have the mentality where we feel like, you know what, if you can't handle me at my worst, then you don't deserve me at my best, right? You might feel like, you know what, uh, that that's wonderful. Of course you want me. I know I have a lot to offer. I know I'm a good person, but 
too bad for you. You couldn't see that about me in that moment when you had your chance. And, you know, if you can't be there for me in that time, then you're not going to be, I'm not going to have you there for me like in, in, in the good times. So you might be breaking some hearts. You may be rejecting some people, you may be putting some people down. Uh, not not pe putting some people down, uh, turning, turning some people down, uh, those of you who are in like this phoenix energy. The next card that's coming up here for the collective is the king of pentacles. So there could be earth sign energy here, um, Taurus, Virgo, or Capricorn, sun, moon, rising, or Venus. Uh it could also be like an aspect of yourself. If you have earth sign placements, you may be focusing on those houses or areas of your life. Um, and this could be uh, causing you to meet a, a new love interest or uh, benefiting your love life in some way. But the King of Pentacles for me is very much a card about stability, security, um, home life, commitment. When we're looking at it in terms of love and romance. So... I do feel like I said, some of you might feel like this is a good connection. Like we have what we need for a happy home. We have what we need for security. But you might be like, why is my heart not in it? And I think it's because of this ego death, right? And I would just say this. If you are in that energy where you're like, this is a good connection. This is a good relationship. Why am I not feeling it for this person? I would say, you know, if it's a good, healthy relationship and there's no dangers and you're just feeling like this fear of like, why am I flatlining in terms of love? Um, I would just say, give it some time. Give it some time to reconnect with yourself. Give yourself some time to come back into your heart center. Uh, give yourself some time to rediscover what your passions and interests are. And you might find that you're able to rekindle this connection with this person. Um, and you might find that you're able to revive love or start new love for this person. I wouldn't jump into any decisions. I wouldn't jump into saying, oh my gosh, I have to leave. Or, oh my gosh, I'm never going to love this person again. The love is gone. What am I going to do? Like, I wouldn't panic. Ego death can be really scary. So maybe this could be a good time to look up, uh, you know, uh, articles about it, uh, videos about it. And maybe that can give you some comfort and some peace of mind that, okay, sure, this feels scary. Sure, this feels confusing, but it's temporary. I'm going through this transition. It's going to, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to come out of it again. And uh, I can see, I can see how I feel when I'm, you know, coming, coming out of this transition. So I wouldn't freak out. I wouldn't jump to, to uh, hurry to make quick, permanent decisions. I would just give myself time to get to know me and to kind of just rediscover who I am and where I am and what I, and what I want uh uh, you know, before, you know, saying, Hey, I don't know if I'm in love with you, or I don't know if I could ever love you again. Like I wouldn't even get into that. Um, uh, I would just say, give yourself some time because King of Pentacles is telling us there is stability, there is security, there is happiness, there are roots, right? So there, there's no sense to, uh, you know, panic and, you know, uproot everything right now. Those of you who are single, King of Pentacles can be somebody coming in here with like a significant offer, like a long-term offer. Like I want to make a home. I want to make a life. Like I want to have a partnership. I want to have commitment. Uh, there could be a serious, uh, serious uh, intentions here with somebody coming in. King of Pentacles can also be the Midas touch. So you may be stepping into these characteristics or you may be manifesting a partner that has that King Midas kind of energy. Some of you, this could be some of you that you're meeting on like a business aspect uh, where it's like um, a business aspect where it's like a, uh, um, like someone kind of showing you the way or someone kind of showing you the ropes or or, or uh, somebody mentoring you. I'm not going to say a boss or a supervisor because that could be dangerous territory. Um, and that could be a misuse of power. And we won't even get into that. 
but it could be somebody that maybe you were doing business with or somebody that like sees potential in you, wants to work with you, wants to partner with you. There could be a business connection or business relationship here for some of you that begins to kind of uh, cross over into romantic connection and attraction. The next card coming up here for the collective is... And I don't read reverses, I just had the deck upside down, is the four of wands. So this could definitely be something that's leading to a happy home and marriage. Four of wands could be marriage. Some of you maybe are being invited to some kind of an event, and you could be meeting a significant soulmate or partner there. Um, you could be having a good time, making some friends. Now, four of wands also for me comes up sometimes in love readings when we're breaking out of the cycle of lovers. Maybe we've had lovers where we're not able to like have mutual friends or, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, kind of be with their friends and family. Like our lives don't merge, even though we have a strong connection. Four of wands comes up for me sometimes to say that we're breaking out of that cycle or pattern. This isn't going to be a lover. This is going to be a life partner. This is someone you can build with. This is somebody that you can socialize with and have a social life with where you all have mutual friends and family. Um, not, not mutual family, not mutual blood family, unless you're in-laws. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I'm trying to say? But you have mutual friends and like your family um, and friends mesh with their family and friends. Like you're able to bring your worlds together. It's not just like, oh, we have this really intense connection and we have this passion and we have this affection for one another. But the only time we see each other is on our dates or in the bedroom, um, but we don't do anything together outside of that, or we don't uh, spend time uh, outside of that. Four of Wands is you're building a life together. You have a, a social life together. You have a, a circle together. You, you, you are in a community together as a couple. And so some of you are establishing this kind of... Um, um, relationship or stability or security. Some of you may be leaving your home to be with someone. You may be le or, or someone is leaving their home to be with you. Uh, there could be a significant relocation here uh, for for one of you where um, uh, th there could be like, like a sense of like starting over, starting over, starting a new life uh, and like relocating. And it could be where this person may be sad or you may be sad, there could be a sense or a feeling of like, I'm leaving my family behind. But I do feel like this would be a very welcoming family. Uh, the new family uh, being entered into would be a welcoming family uh, for those of you that have that dynamic or that situation. The next card coming up here for the collective is the world. And this is a major arcana card, right? We started with a major arcana card. We have a major arcana card here. So big changes and big shifts in love life for the collective in February. The world card is telling us karmic cycles are over. We've learned our lessons. Now is the time to be seen. Now is the time to be celebrated. I feel that this is someone who's not going to hold you back. Maybe in the past you dealt with partners who made you feel like you're trying to get attention or you want it to be all about you and you just want to be in the spotlight. And I feel like this is someone who values you, um, who, who, who sees you important, whatever it is that you're doing, they take it seriously and they're not trying to hold you back. They're not trying to stifle you. They want to see you shine. They want to see you succeed. Um, they celebrate you. They say good things about you uh, and vice versa. You know, I feel there's like this, this mutual energy of like allowing each other like to do your thing, allowing each other to be seen. Um, there could also be an element here uh, for some of you where this is like somebody like they're just shouting from the rooftops that you all are together. They're so proud. They're so proud that they're in a relationship with you. Um, they're, they're, they can't wait to show you off. They can't wait to claim you, like claim you on their social media, claim you with friends and family. Uh, so if you have found yourself in situations in the past where you feel like people don't put you on their social media or you feel like people kind of hide the relationship, this is the opposite of that. This is like, hey, everybody, look how wonderful my person is. 
oh my gosh, aren't they amazing? Like, I feel like this is someone who brags about you. Like, who's like just telling everybody how wonderful you are and how great you are. So I feel there's a sense of like receiving praise, receiving recognition. Uh, you know, somebody saying very positive things about you. Uh, I do feel for whatever reason, this is somebody that is not going to do well hearing other people like gossip uh gossip at all because i feel like this is somebody that has the mindset that if you're gossiping about these people then you're going to be gossiping about me when i'm not here so i would just say be careful like be careful with this person i feel like it's going to be very off-putting to them if they hear negative things being said about someone that's not there in the moment so just know this be aware of this, be cautious of this, and uh, uh, speak positively. I feel like this is someone that wants to speak positively of others and uh, wants to feel as though like they can trust that when they're not around, people aren't saying negative things about them. Maybe in the past, this has been an issue for them. Maybe they've had family talk negatively about them behind their back. Maybe they've been married before or had in-laws before and the in-laws were constantly tearing them down. Like this is something they have zero tolerance for. And this message is coming in intuitively, not so much through the cards, but more intuitively. So just be careful because some of you could be dealing with someone that this is a major issue for them. And maybe it's not even like you're gossiping. Like you might just be venting about someone or I can't believe they said this to me or I can't believe they, they, they did this. Like you could just be venting i would just say be very cautious be very cautious not to speak negatively about others in front of this person because i feel like it's a very uh sore uh sore spot for them right so instead of venting about the person it may be better to go to that person and say hey this upset me or this offended me or this hurt my feelings and then you can tell your person you know they did this thing and I really didn't like it and, and I told them I didn't like it and now you're just telling them about what happened but it's not coming off as like you're talking about that person behind their back the next card that's coming up here is the nine of pentacles this is a card that's been coming up for a few signs so there could be something here collectively in terms of overcoming anxiety sometimes nine of pentacles comes up to say we're going to be successful in a situation because we're overcoming our anxiety anxiety was the block and we're getting that under control nine of pentacles can also be financial independence also self-employment there could be matters of business doing business together, establishing business together, um, or having like your own money, uh, which is making the relationship less stressful or, um, you know, uh, allowing both people to have a certain level of uh, security or uh, uh, safety in the connection or in the relationship. Uh, Nine of Pentacles can also indicate like somebody watching us from afar to just kind of really get an idea of who we are, if we're who we seem to be before taking steps or before making a move. So some of you could be working with this person for some time and they may be getting to know you through like this aspect uh, before taking the step and saying, hey, I want a personal relationship with you or I want a romantic relationship with you. You may want to check out your moon sign, your rising sign, your Venus sign if this is none of those. Sometimes those other placements might resonate more for you than your sun sign. There is a playlist in the description of the video so that you can check out um, the other readings, uh, the other videos on the channel. There's also a link in the description that will take you to my scheduling page. If you would like to schedule a private reading with me, it will take you to calendly.com slash amethystangelite and you can schedule a private reading with me there. Uh, I thank you all for watching, liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing. I hope you'll come back and check out the weekly forecasts on the channel where I talk about everything other than love. Uh, but otherwise, I hope you all have a fabulous February. Take care and be well, my darlings.